Welcome back guys, if you have an active membership of Amazon Prime, you can claim many PC games for absolutely free. For example, games like Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Game of the Red Edition, Lego Indiana Jones, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Borderlands Pre-Sequel, Borderlands Part 2, the list is not over yet. Trek to Yumi can also be claimed for absolutely free. In this video, I'll be trying out, there it is, Trek to Yumi. Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Borderlands 2 on my ROG ally. I had the Z1 Extreme variant of this device. I'll just claim Shadow of the Tomb Raider from Prime Gaming website. Make sure you're signed to your Prime account. This is the Epic Games version of Shadow of Tomb Raider Get Game. It has been added to my Epic Games account. Next we have Borderlands Part 2. Epic Games version again. Added to my account. Trek to Yomi. Get Game. Again it's the Epic Games version of the game. Added to my account. You can also claim the PC version of Football Manager 2024 and Sniper Ghost Warrior contracts for absolutely free from Epic Games website. I'll kick things off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The game is set 3 years after the events of Rise of the Tomb Raider. Its story follows Lara Croft as she ventures through the tropical regions of the Americas to the legendary city of Piedity, battling the paramilitary organization Trinity and racing to stop a Mayan apocalypse she has unleashed. I'll be running the game with AMD's driver level implementation of frame generation that is AFMF2. For this game, I've set the UMA buffer size to 5GB, my ally is running on BIOS version 339. Using a 25W manual profile all 3 power values set at 25W, 900p resolution CPU boost disabled. I've connected my Gullicate KK3 Max gamepad to ally via Bluetooth mode. Games launcher, show you the settings from here, 900p resolution. Using XCSS Subscaler, its quality preset VSync disabled, DirectX 12 version of the game, full screen mode. Using the high preset, I've just disabled motion blur, that's why here the preset is shown as custom instead of high. Adrenaline settings for the game, VSync enable, RSI enable, resolution upscale from 900p to full HD, AFMF2 disable for the time being, VSync off. I'll use Adrenal Lens Overlay to show you the performance metrics. Control Shift and O keys together. There it is. There's Lara. Hey, we're getting around 55 FPS. Perfect for enabling AFNF. Input response. VRAM usage is close to 4.6 GB. Hitting the GP bottleneck. I'll just enable AFNF now. FPS should increase to around 100. I'll apply a 60 FPS cap as well. Enable Radiant Chill. Set the values to 60. AFMF2 on. Check its status. It should be active. Search mode set to high. This will prevent frame generation from getting disabled during fast visual motion. Performance mode set to quality. Turn to the game. Now we're getting close to 90 FPS. Check out the real world input delay, nothing extreme. Frame generation lag value 17 milliseconds. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. Games hard elements are not flickering, not observing any artifacts around Lara's character model. Very smooth experience on ROG Ally. No hitching at all in this game, very nicely optimized. Cutscene, skip. Thick foliage here. Need to take out these guys. Come on. Use Just the stealth it. approach. Ninety FPS. Use my bow. Dead. That arrow pierced through his skull, oh my god. Back to the game. I have to find what they're looking for. Gorgeous visuals. This is Commander Rourke. All teams, get ready for Operation Blackout. Beautiful moonlight. Platforming elements here. I know this figure. Need to drop he down. The goddess of the Make my way down. 
and use the axe clinch to the surface like this grapple okay, down made it unstable surface this is commander Rourke I want the site secured ASAP when Dr. Dominguez arrives we all go in together <laughs> I need to jump across. Wish me luck. Lara <laughs> crowd defying physics. Same thing happens in uncharted games. Oh no. This time in my jump. So excellent experience on Rogue Island. I'll be testing the next game. Trek to Yomi is a side scrolling action game set during the Edo period of feudal Japan. The game follows a young swordsman named Hiroki who embarks on a quest of vengeance when his home village is burned, leading him to enter Yomi, the Japanese underworld, and confront the evils of his past. Again, I'm running the game at 900p resolution. Uncap the FPS, display mode, portalless window, 900p resolution, grain filter disabled. Using the high preset. And that's it. Adrenaline setting, facing enable, facing disable, anti lag setting enable. RSI enable resolution upscale from 900p to full HD. There is a character Hiroki. FPS is close to 65. Here we are hitting the GPU bottleneck. VRAM usage around 3.5 GB. Shrine service checkpoints, combat time. Block the attacks holding the L1 key. Attack by pressing the X key. Bandits. Surround it. Do a 180 degree turn by pressing the A key. Another shine. And who is this brave little warrior? Stand down, dog! I am a samurai! Take out this guy. Another one. Excellent experience out of the box. You can see a bandit in the background. Yeah, can roll by pressing the B key. Now I have enabled AFMF2, frame generation status active, search mode high, performance mode quality, applied a 60 FPS cap using radiant chill. Back to the game, you can see FPS increased to around 100, frame generation lag value 16 milliseconds. I cannot move the camera around so I really cannot observe the added amount of smoothness, I am not sure what to say. Even without AFMF2, we were getting around 60 FPS. Animation was looking smooth. Shrine activated. Upon death, we will respawn at the last activated shrine. Frame generation lag value 16 milliseconds. Input delay is not a problem again. Not seeing any graphical artifacts. He has blocked. I think I need to push this card. Yeah, that worked. 
this bastard since Susana, but he keeps his work. You Quickly clear the area. Excellent experience. Now I'll be testing the next game. Borderlands 2 is an old game now. On Windows platform it uses Direct 3D 9 API. This causes some performance issues on modern day PCs like ROG Ally. So I'll be using DXVK translation layer to translate Direct 3D 9 calls to Vulkan API. You can download it for free from DXVK's GitHub page. Just click on the latest version under releases section. At the time of recording this video it's version 2.4 even supports Direct 3D 8 API just click on this star.gz link under set section open file explorer go to your downloads directory look for the tar.gz file there it is open it then open the dxvk folder open x32 folder then copy this dll file d3 d9 need to paste it in the games install directory happy games version just click on the three dots below the games box art. Click on manage. Click on the folder icon here. This will open the games install directory. There it is. Open binaries folder. Open win32 folder. Paste the DLL file here. There is the games exe file. Now just create a text file. Right click in the blank area. Go to new. Click on text document. Open it. Just add this line of text. It will fix the missing lava at vault of the warrior. I will provide the text in the description of the video. Click on file, click on save, close. Now we need to rename this file. Rename it to dxvk.conf. Change its extension, click on yes. That's it, we are ready to run the game. Just need to add one launch option. Click on your profile icon, then click on settings, scroll down until you find borderlands 2, there it is, expand it, check this box, next to additional command line arguments, add this line of text, dash, no launcher, launch the game. Borderlands 2 is an action role playing game played from a first person perspective, taking place 5 years following the events of borderlands part 1, the game is again set on the planet of Pandora. The story follows a new group of vault hunters who must ally with the Crimson Raiders, a resistance group made up of civilian survivors and guerrilla fighters to defeat the tyrannical handsome Jack before he can unlock the power of a new vault. First I'll show you the in-game settings. My character. Now when you run the game for the first time with TXVK install it will stutter a lot. Play the game for about 30 to 40 minutes for the performance to stabilize. Resync disabled, frame rate unlimited, isotropic filter in 16 times, maxed out all of the settings except for physics effects, it is set to low, and that's it. Antenna lens overlay, here you can see graphics API Vulkan DXVK is working. I'll just increase the resolution to full HD. Resolution full HD, apply. Internal and setting, pre-sync enable, pre-sync disable, anti-lag setting enable, that's it. Here we are getting around 60 FPS, perfect for enabling. Here yeah, have of 2, I'm just collecting some ammo. Fifty-three to sixty FPS. Let's clap tap. Even though Knuckle Dragger blindsided me, I know my way around this glacier. I bet you will find my eye in frostbite crevasse. Locked and loaded. Oof. I'll just enable AFMF now. Active. Search mode set to high. Performance mode set to quality. Yeah, I'm observing some minor ghosting around the gun. Can observe the added amount of smoothness. 90 to 100 FPS. Some ghosting around the crosshair. It's up to you. You can drop the resolution to around 900p and disable AFMF. Won't be seeing these graphical artifacts. <laughs> Left half is excited. 
Okay, we need to retrieve its eye. See the creatures. There they are. Not done yet. Use my other gun. Very smooth experience, all thanks to TXVK. By default, this game is this direct 3D 9 API. It will give you some performance issues on ROG LA. Discovered. Can hear the growling. Yeah, there's the feature. So, excellent experience again. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.